What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Touchdown with Doug Smith as we continue our 2023 NFL Draft Prospect Series. I got another home run for you guys. Now, this gentleman, he not only has a very inspiring story in which we're going to take and get into that here today, um, but he's he's been a college football journeyman, former team captain for Alcorn State. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to take and walk. Welcome, Claude Cherilis. How you doing today, man? I'm good. And yourself? Oh, man. Bless and highly favored, man. Happy to be here today, man. Um, Claude, thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule. Uh, you just announced the other day on social media that you are, in fact, going to be entering into the 2023 NFL draft. Uh, how how has this whole journey been for you so far? I mean, uh, I mean, it's 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 still it's still fresh and new to me. It's still fresh on my mind. Just the fact that, you know, um, I went through that, finished uh, college, played my years, you know, especially through COVID and all. And now, you know, I'm finally getting that that chance. Gotcha. Yeah. When COVID was happening, it was nuts because yeah. some college football seasons got just completely canceled, you know, yeah. kind of thing. Um, that being said, uh, tell us from the beginning, when did you first fall in love with the game of football? So uh, it's uh, funny. So I was really a, a, a basketball player in middle school, like middle school, high school, like early high school. Like I really just, you know, like basketball. My mom always had me in basketball and I, I never played like football for like a city league team until um my last my last year in middle school so eight, eighth grade I played um I was on the team for the first time and I wasn't you know I, I I felt I was good but I wasn't just a standout player you know I feel like we had a good team though but I played a uh, defensive end and I wanted to be a tight end but um I couldn't catch back then so they put me a defensive end and then you know I played a little bit I did all right and then uh I got to high school and um I played linebacker, which was new to me. And then after linebacker, I played I played linebacker. They, I played a little bit of tight end, not too much. Then I went to O-line, believe it or not. Then I went back to linebacker my sophomore year, and I actually made varsity on the offseason. So then um played uh, linebacker my sophomore year, and then junior year, halfway through the season, moved to safety, and then, Played safety junior and senior year, kind of moved around, played everywhere. But, um, yeah, throughout that whole process, you know, I just, you know, fell more in love with the game. And, you know, I just was having fun out there. So it was something I just, like, told myself, man, I'm, I'm going to try to do it. Oh, yeah. And and you're from South Florida originally. So it's – the competition is not – we're not talking about Rhode Island or anything like that. We're talking about this is – where NFL players are born and bred from all walks of life, you know, like Florida, come and get it, you know? Definitely. I, I like to say, you know, we got the, the best high school football, even though some of my teammates from other places might disagree, but we got the best talent. Oh, I mean, I couldn't agree more, uh, not to make this about myself, but man, growing up, I lived in Cali, I've lived in Texas and Florida. Florida got on lock. It's not yeah. even close. <laughs> and we got the speed down here, so, you know. We got it all. We got it all. Plus the sunshine. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let me ask you, man. When did you first um, realize, like, hey, I could take this beyond high school football, uh, and then eventually to to the NFL? When did you like? First, what was your aha moment? Where like, hey, this could potentially become a career one day. So um, it's crazy though. Um, so my sophomore year, actually, when I got bumped up, um, I remember I was sitting in class, and then um, my teacher had told me uh, someone's here, like uh, college coach is coming. So I'm like, I right. like I, I really wasn't thinking much of it. Like at that mm -hmm. time, I wasn't thinking about, you know, going to college for football or nothing like that. Like, um, so, um, you know, I walked in his office to have a conversation. It's, it's actually uh, Clemson was there. And, um, wow. you know, I didn't know how big it was at the moment, but my teacher at the time, he was my high school basketball coach. So he was kind of like telling me like, yeah, this, you know, this kind of big. And like he kind of, I wouldn't say got on me, but like, you know, like, kind of put me on game more about like you know how the process works and stuff like that so then um kind of like throughout that process like i mean uh coaches just kept coming in and like little by little i'm gaining more knowledge thinking like like i could actually you know go d1 and i didn't think that was you know a possibility at first in high school because i thought it was just damn near impossible like i thought it was like you know and uh, they always give you the statistic or so many people go to play college football and this many go D1, this many go to the next level. So yeah. coming in as a freshman, 
Yeah, and I wasn't just, you know, a star player my freshman year. I was, you know, I was thinking like, you know, this is fun and all, but I didn't think I could go this far. And as I was going by, you know, I kind of started to see it. Now, fast forward, eventually you uh, head up to the Northeast to UMass Amherst. Uh, what was that decision process like uh, and, and why UMass Amherst? Originally, I was committed to Minnesota and, um, you know, stuff had happened. Coaching changes had happened kind of late in the process. And um, mm-hmm. so I remember, I think it was sometime around January, you know, early to mid-January. Uh, I had decommitted. I made a decision to decommit after they had got a new head coach. And it wasn't nothing against him. It was just, you know a personal decision I decided to make. And then, um, so I had UMass was my, actually my second offer around this time. So, um, they had stuck with me throughout the whole process. And then, um, one of my former teammates was actually still there. At the, he was, he, he was actually at UMass at the moment. So, you uh-huh. know, that kind of, you know, plays part of your decision. You know, you got someone that you play with already up there. And then, you know, I just liked, um, the uh level of competition you know they were independent so they can pretty much play whoever they wanted and then if you go back and look 2017 18 we had a pretty good schedule and then um yeah coach walker you know he played a big part of that recruitment you know and i just made that decision you mentioned coaches are are there any coaches that help for you to get to where you are today yeah um you know uh, of course all my high school coaches coach d um you know um actually my high school linebacker coach my senior year, coach coach Benz um I still work out and train with him when I go back home so um, he played a major role in that all my coaches at UMass uh all my coaches at Alcorn you know um yeah they all played a, a big role in you know getting me to where I am that's awesome now eventually you come over down to the uh the SWAC division the, yeah. one of the most exciting electric divisions right now in college football Choose Alcor State. What happened? How come? And then obviously, because they're they're a great program and you're a great player. So how, how did that whole thing, that transition go about? So um when I had hit the port originally, you know, I was, you know, talking to everyone, you know, how it is, you know, um, teams showing interest, like, you know, just hitting you up just, you know, just to get their name in front of you, basically, you know, see if you have interest. You get a couple of offers here and there. I had actually hit up Alcorn, um, before because they had won their uh, conference championship that year so they were going on to the celebration board playing me at and then um i had hit them up during then and they didn't get back to me till after the game because you know they're technically still in season so they're not really dealing with all that stuff yet and then um i was actually going to go up there with uh one of my former teammates he ended up not actually going but um yeah i had ended up People don't know. I actually took a semester off after hitting the portal because um, it was kind of too late to get into any school at the moment. And I didn't want to rush the decision. So, um, yeah. And then uh, Coach Fred had hit me up. He came down. He came down, I think, like a day or two later, and, you know, um, for an in-home visit. And um, after that, that next weekend, they had me come up and I just made that decision. I felt like it was right. That's awesome. That's awesome. And then Alcorn, I mean, football speaking wise, I mean, it's not a like great education. Um, you, you'll be lined up for a great career one day, but also as well, like a lot of guys go to NFL from there. I mean, Steve McNair, Donald Driver, just to name a few names. I mean, it's it's a great school to take to be a part of. Um, obviously, in that division, that SWAC division, there's another powerhouse. And I'm sure you know where I'm going with this. Yeah. Jackson State. <laughs> explain to me the rivalry i i know quite a bit i interviewed you know shout out to cj holmes uh, yeah. he's in the xfl right now uh and, and a few of the other players so i know a little bit about the rivalry from their perspective but describe your perspective playing you know powerhouse school like that i mean um you know i played uh i played in uh big bigger games you know like at bigger stadiums you know that's what i mean big Stadiums, I played at Georgia, Tennessee, the Mississippi State. I was, you know, I've seen that type of crowd, but uh, I like to tell people like the atmosphere a little different, you know, with HBCU ball. And then when it comes to Jackson State specifically for us, it's just, it's just a whole different. It's like, it's like hate week, you know, like <laughs> basically like on all court campus, like everything is just, you, you know, beat Jackson State, hate Jackson State, and Jackson State. I'm pretty sure it's the same way, and then. You know, you get to the game and just people just wolfing, but like people don't understand. It starts like 
it's really year round. Like I remember I go to Walmart and like it's the first game of the season and people talking about like, oh y'all better be Jackson Day. And I'm like, you know, we in week one, we in week one. And y'all talk about that. <laughs> it's just different. Like I remember, you know, we went there last year and like we got there probably almost four hours before the game in the stadium, halfway filled up. And then like we driving through and like the um you know, like we 10 minutes away from the stadium and people are parking like so they could walk there. And, you know, 10 minute drive is going to be like a, you know, at least a 40 minute walk, something like yeah. that. 30 minute walk. It's packed. And, you know, this year we had at our place and, you know, if you ever been to all court, it's kind of more compact than the smaller. It's just crazy. Like there's no service on campus. Like, yeah, we actually had an escort. So um, so after we eat pre and meal, you know, we, we took we get on the bus and we ride around the back through, you know, to get to the locker room. And um, it's probably like a five minute drive, if that, you know, with no traffic. It took us, I think it took us about 40 minutes this year because we couldn't move at one point. So it was just crazy. And like, you know, pregame, like the crowd already filled up, people talking crazy. Like it's just, it's a, it's an atmosphere you can't really explain. You just got to be there. Oh my goodness! Yeah, I I, I got to catch me a game. There was a, uh, a HBCU uh, Battle of the Bands here in Orlando, Florida, a couple of years ago, and I was trying to take a shortcut. I, was, I ain't paying for no tolls today. Lord have mercy! I was stuck in traffic. That was supposed to be another fifteen minute ride for an hour and a half. I was like, yeah. wow, this is HBCU. Man, the crowd, the energy is amazing. So yeah, I gotta I I had actually attend it next time for sure. Uh, let me ask you, you are a um, you're a team captain for Alcorn, which is a major responsibility, not only on the field, but off the field. Uh, how did that decision come about? So, yeah, um, when I first got there, you know, um, I came in, you know, and I know I like I've seen it happen in the past. I see how people got people talk about, you know, the transfers and stuff like that. So my main thing was like at first, like I didn't want to be that guy like, um, you know, transfer from FBS to FCS like. I don't want to be that guy come in think I'm better than everyone. Like, you know, think all this is, you know, given me. So I came, I came in with the mindset, just, you know, head down to work and, you know, people go follow um, by default. So I came in, you know, I was, I really, you can ask any of my teammates. I didn't really talk to much of them. I was just going to work. You know, I wasn't just no, Oh, I'm better than you type. Nah, I was encouraging them. Like, you know, we all D one, like, we all we we all were the best football players on our teams, and we here for a reason. So, I mean, eventually, like you know, with um on the field production, of course, because you know that helps. Like you got to do some on the field, you know, it's gonna help people follow you. So, I mean, ultimately, like my teams, my 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 coaches, my teammates, you know, they just you know started following, and you know, I was a captain. That's awesome. That's awesome. What are a couple of things that keep you grounded? Obviously, you've had a very successful college uh, football career, and then now you'd be looking to take it to the next level. Uh, what are a few things that keep you grounded in life? Uh, I, mostly, I just, you know, remember where I came from, you know, remember um, how I started. So, um, you know, when I first started playing football, I just always go back to remember, like, I wasn't just that guy. I wasn't just the star player. Like, I didn't just have, you know, 40 offers coming out of high school, you know, and I, I read sure my freshman year. I always say like red shirt is a blessing in disguise to keep you humble. Cause you know, it, it just always remind you like there's more work to be done and no matter how, how good you think you are, you could always be better. So, I mean, that always kept me grounded. And like when I got all corn, it was really like, you know, head down mentality. You know, I got two more years of eligibility to make some shakes. So, I, I really didn't have to do much thinking on that. Oh yeah, and what would you describe that your line, your because you're a linebacker. What, what's your linebacker style? Would you say you're more of a hybrid? Are you more of a blitz overall field general coverage uh, type linebacker? How, how would you say your style of play is above? But uh, I'm a I'm a hybrid linebacker. I feel like I play inside outside the box anywhere in the front seven. So I just feel comfortable wherever they put me in whatever scheme. Some, any NFL players that you model your game after currently? I I wouldn't say model my game after, but uh, I watch a lot of uh, Darius Landon. I watch um, Fred Warner, you know, Devin White, the top few guys. I like Michael Parsons too lately. Uh, now for game day, let me ask you, uh, what is in your headphones on game day? Michael Jackson, um, you know, before I, 
before I, um, you know, get in that mode for real. And then after that, you know, cut on a Kodak Black, like all the uh, the Jeezy, the Ace Hood, all that, like stuff that's going on. I listened to some YB during uh, that time, but yeah. That's dope. You mentioned Ace Hood, man. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm about to be 34. That's, that's like more my lane. <laughs> that's cool, man. And uh, hey, last question of the night, man. Let me ask you. What type of player, if, if you could say anything to a NFL team who, you know, and they do a lot of research, they do a lot of research. They call neighbors up, they do they watch yeah. interviews like this or any NFL teams watching this. What would you have to say to them right now? What kind of player are they going to get? I mean, uh, you're going to get a, a fast learner, first of all. You know, I feel I like to say my football IQ is, you know, up there with the best. Um, you're going to get a hard worker, someone that just knows the task at hand and someone that just knows what it's like to be on both sides and all around the ball. Love it. I love it. I love it. Claude, man, thank you so much for taking your time out of your busy schedule. Uh, literally, you just got in training before we, we filmed this here. So thank you again for taking time out of your busy schedule meet me here today. Uh, real quick before we wrap up the interview, man, any any shout outs? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Shout out to SG, shout out to the All-Stars, you know, shout out to my whole family. Uh, yeah, that's it. Awesome. Folks, there you have it. If you don't get inspired from that, I don't know what will inspire you. Claude, thank you so much for coming again. If you want to take and follow his story, I'm going to have all of his social media links down below in the description. Be sure to go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Catch you next time on The Touchdown with Doug Smith. Most definitely. Thank you. Thanks for watching another episode of The Touchdown with Doug Smith, where I cover all 32 NFL teams plus NFL exclusive interviews. Hit that subscribe button, hit the bell for the alerts, comment below, and we'll catch you next time on The Touchdown with Doug Smith.